I don't know about you, I love French fries. You've got to love that image, right? So hands up, everybody. Who's had French fries this week? I ate them at Central last night. Yep, they were lovely. Right, so we've got a healthy audience here today. <laughs> so um, today I'm going to talk about how Multitech and our partners have been transforming the retail and quick serve restaurant business. And this is fast turning into a very electronic business with a lot of digital touch points. And for those who do it correctly, the customers, us, they gladly eat it up. So I thought I'd start with a few, um, a few kind of numbers, really, about how big this market is. I mean, we all know it's big, right? I mean, it's huge. Um, but 50 billion burgers a year. How many burgers do you think we could cram into this building? I suspect a fraction of 50 billion burgers. There are over 100,000 quick-serve restaurants just in the United States. 85 million people in America eat fast food most days of the week. So, uh, so you know, heckle me here. What do you reckon is the biggest market for fast food in the world? What, what continent, you think, is the biggest market for fast food? Give Yan a gold star. Asia. Asia is the, uh, the biggest market for fast food in the world. And partly that's because of urbanization, people moving out of rural environments into the city, getting employment, and being away from home during mealtimes. So if Asia is the biggest market um, for fast food, um, what do you think is the fastest growing region of the world for fast food? Africa, yeah, good, good, good answer. It's here, Europe. Europe is the fastest growing market for uh, quick serve restaurants. One of the key reasons is women moving into employment, the workforce, again, being away from home during mealtimes. Now, although uh, this market is well over 700 billion, it's growing at about 4% CAGR, it's going to hit a billion dollars by the end of, uh, of the decade. But of course, most all of us buy food from retailers, right? We live in urban environments, we buy it from supermarkets. Uh, Walmart is the world's biggest supermarket retailer, $660 billion. As you can see, 300,000 outlets here in Europe alone, over $11 trillion growing at 3% per year. Um, to take a quote from Star Wars, that's more money than I can possibly imagine, and I can imagine quite a bit. So, so let's have a little look at what are the, uh, the, the stakeholders here in this business. So there's three main stakeholders. There's the corporate companies, um, companies like McDonald's, Burger King, Kentucky Fried Chicken, you know, whatever your favorite is. And these guys are focused on brand value. This is how they're going to grow their market share. And it's about consistency, right? I mean, you buy a burger in one location, perhaps in another region in the world. You just want it to be consistent every time. And this has been how they've grown this business. Of course, some organizations have a very corporate-owned uh, approach to the business, like supermarket chains often. But many companies, and McDonald's is a great example of this, they have a franchisee model. And so you have building uh, business owners. And those business owners, they don't just own one uh, McDonald's. They typically own 25, 30, maybe even 100. This is very similar to consumer real estate. They own a portfolio, and for them, it's super important to be able to uh, reduce their operational costs, significantly reduce their risks, and a lot of that is through digital compliance. And they're obviously up against a lot of labor shortages right now, right? So trying to take workers off of more mundane tasks and put them on something a little bit more... Um, 
interest in is super important. And like all businesses, it's easier to keep servicing your customers than it is to find new ones. So it's about elevating that customer experience. And the customer is king here. It's right in the middle. I mean, I, you guys, we wouldn't buy food if we had any inkling that that was somehow going to make us ill, right? If we had the slightest doubt, we would never buy that food. So it's about confidence in the purchase, and it's about a consistent experience, and increasingly with electronic food, so e-food, you know, ordering it, curbside pickup, uh, non-traditional delivery channels like Uber Eats and, uh, and Grubhub. It's about having a personal experience with a phone app, with offers, and that is rippling all the way into the back office. So here's a quick um, overview of some of the challenges that Multitech and our partners had to navigate through in order to be successful in this market. So who are we selling to? Are we, seller, are we selling to corporate companies, or are we selling to the franchisee? Corporate, this moves super quick. I mean, once there's a use case, like maybe compliance, this will go through a, uh, a big national retailer or fast food chain in months. Thousands of stores done very quickly. But again, many of these businesses are owned by franchisees, and this is very different. This is about making sure that we're taking as much operational cost out of the business, making sure that that portfolio continues to grow, and that we can ident they can identify how a good outlet here is performing better, and why is that to perhaps another one of their outlets in another location. And of course, you know, that sale has to happen many times with every franchisee. I think we'd all agree a professional install is the way to go, but many of these use cases require a self-install, and, and that means we have to keep it real simple. I got a few examples of some deployments, and, and you'll see how keeping it simple was done. When you can go in and reset a gateway in a test site or download new software in a test site, this is very different from when you're scaling across thousands of supermarkets or restaurants. So having uh, hardware from a vendor that has a full network management platform of the infrastructure and the sensors is just table stakes. It's mandatory. And with that, the, the infantry, companies like well, Multitech, we, we purchase tens of millions of dollars of components per year. We have a healthy cash flow in our business, so we can really stock up on components in order to anticipate um, very fast nationwide deployments in these chains. And that's super important for the partners that we work with that are building the solutions and the application platforms. And of course, by using those management platforms, we can trade off frequency of updates so that the customer gets that battery life and the K KPIs that they're looking for. So let's have a look at a, a few examples here. Food safety and compliance. Um, anybody working in LoRaWAN knows that temperature monitoring is golden in every different market segment. And it's no different here. Same with freezers and refrigerators. And as you can see, uh, Multitech and our partners have been working with many more than this. Um, different fast food companies, quick serve restaurants, and, uh, and retailers. And what we've been doing is developing and deploying sensors that measure humidity and temperature. It's a classic sensor to gateway to cloud model, and in the cloud is the operational execution platform, uh, often by our partners. And um, in order to keep it simple and make it really easy, um, we use a, um, a barcode app so that, that anybody can scan that, goes into the platform. And then we have a magnetic activation on the sensors. So they can activate the sensor. They can see that data come in the platform within you know, a minute or so. 
And, uh, and of course, that triggers a download of all the profiles and the settings of how this device is going to perform, the IT is you know, put up in the platform. And then they put it in the back of the fridge. And this is night and day from where the world was. This was all pen and paper historically. Franchises managed this on, on basically the back of a napkin. Now all of this is digital and is significantly reducing uh, risks. I walked down into my house about two years ago, and uh, there was a mass massive puddle of water on the floor, and my freezer had given up. And there were hundreds of dollars of, um, of stuff in that fridge that was useless. You can only imagine how much waste and spoilage there is here. Um, so having an easy-to-deploy system that is fully uh, digital is, is really change in the landscape here. I also wanted to point out that we have a full standardized message structure on our sensors. So that's completely transparent. You can pull that out of our documents. In fact, it's even on the Things Network device repository. So you can select a multi-text sensor, and you can already build out your application server. Um, interesting what came out of this, <laughs> predictive maintenance. Um, we now see how hard that freezer is working during the day, at night time, hot days, cold days. And this, is, this data is gold dust for our partners that are developing the application enablement platforms and analytics platforms. I also wanted to touch on supply chain management. You know, never has that been uh, a more uh, difficult situation. And cooking oil is a great example of that. Uh, did you know that many of these brands have cooking oil that is exactly designed to their secret recipe. McDonald's, for example, one of the reasons why McDonald's has the best French fries in the business is not only the ingredients, the length of time, the temperature of the oil, but it's their custom formula. So if you're owning a quick serve McDonald's restaurant, you can't just go down to your local um, Costco and go buy oil. You know, if, if you run out of oil, it's like electricity's gone off in this business, right? You're out of business. So you can't just go down the road. This is being brought into you by a supply chain in tankers. They put it into a good tank, which is all the fresh oil. They suck out all of the used oil. And again, this was all pen and paper. They'd send trucks out. This location is maybe 70% down on oil. Then they go to the next one. It's only 20% down. They do the same breadcrumb route every Monday. They bring the truck back. Truck's got half the oil still left in it. Well, in a world where you can't find the drivers, um, this is not, not easy to be able to support a system like that. Laura Wan has completely transformed this for these types of industries because now you can be very prescriptive about where you send the trucks. And that means less trucks coming back empty, which means less carbon emissions, which then starts to fold into the sustainability targets of these large companies and how that ripples down their supply chain. Um, of course, it's not just tank monitoring, it's uh, temperature monitoring, the hoods, those hoods get clogged up, they have to be cleaned, it's an oily business, right? So you have to clean the back of the ovens and the fryers, and, and this causes endless problems with wired sensors. Interesting as well that um, these franchisee owners, they start to realize that some of the locations, you know, half an hour before quitting time, they start turning off the fat fryers and the ovens. And if you're one of the last customers coming in and your burger's been out for 20 minutes, that's not a very consistent experience, is it? And there's brand loss with that. So, so a lot of, um, you know, unexpected outcomes on this one as well. The last one I want to talk about is pest control. So, uh, you know, we're all familiar <laughs> with, uh, with pests. Um, this was one of the uh, top three retailers in Europe. And we worked with a number of partners. BTM was the system integrator. I think many of you have uh, worked with Signal before that makes the, uh, the pest control traps. 
Simacheck as the uh, operations, uh, the, the pest control platform, and Things Network um, taking data from multi-tech gateways up into the cloud platform. And, uh, and this has completely transformed how these um, supermarket chains and quick serve restaurants deal with pest control. They typically had a guy on a breadcrumb route again, out once a month, maybe once a week if you're lucky, puts down wooden traps, comes back next week, what has it caught? Now, with LoRaWAN, these traps, um, when they go off, they bring with them an SLA where somebody will come back into that facility from the service company within 24 hours, 24 seven days a week, and they've reduced their operating cost by 60%. What we learn in this process is that these guys don't get paid for killing pests. They get paid to stop any pests from ever going in there. But having these kind of traps and having that 24-hour response times enables them to nip it in the bud quickly, to be able to have regulatory approval in many countries, to then start putting traps and, and chemical around the outside of the buildings to create a super hostile environment so that these pests never come back in again. And, uh, and you know, dealing with the false and the real catch, yeah, that, that's been a tricky art that we've managed to really resolve and, uh, and, and make work for everyone. So I'm going to end with, uh, with this slide, where, um, where I think you can see that Multitech and our partners have taken the retail and quick service restaurant industry out of first gear here and well into second. But where is it going? So, um, so many of you know Multitech as that company that provides gateways and maybe sensors for LoRa. But we actually do a lot of integrated designs for many, many large companies, the types of companies that are providing um, uh, prep tables into kitchens where they measure all the portion size and they've got scales and everything's connected and digitally recorded for consistency. Um, ovens, fat fryers, uh, fridges, and so on, right? So we, we provide that OEM connectivity into many, many companies, you know, large companies that supply this uh, segment of the business. We also do complete turnkey designs for companies like uh, um, hand sanitizers, for example. We built six million hand sanitizers last year with all of the sensors, the solenoid, the communications, everything but the chemical that lands in your hand. And so Multitech is working really hard with these OEMs to bring all of this born digital equipment into these markets. Electronic food has completely revolutionized how these guys are going to market, and it's enabling them to have that personalized experience with their customers. And that is creating a lot of digital touch points as you go back into the back office and the operations. But what I tried to show you with those three use cases is that once the hero use case is in place and all of that LoRa network is now in the building, then more carbon reduction and sustainability becomes very easy to deliver on. Those hand sanitizers, you know, bathrooms where you put your hands underneath the sink, you know, zero touch bathrooms, the water comes out, you sit up, the toilet flushes. Multitech manufactures that for a lot of companies as well. So bringing that kind of technology into the restrooms. The safety systems, these aren't just fire alarms. If they were, they would be going off all day in these industrial kitchens. They're measuring chemical compounds and rate of change. And so, again, that ties into more LoRa sensors, more compliance and risk management, people counting, and dramatically reducing the operational costs with prescriptive management. So this business is going to be massive, and it has only just begun. If you want to learn more, come speak to us. We're on the Concept 13 booth just to the left outside. Um, Concept 13 is one of the value-added resellers that Multitech does a lot of business with. So thank you ever so much. It's a pleasure being here today.